Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, then my voice is audible. Please send a message. Yes, my voice is audible. Send a message. Send a text message. Is it audible or not? Yes, ma'am. Okay, guys. So in the last class, we discussed about the venture emitter. So we know that the venture emitter is a device which is used to find out the rate of flow. And similarly, we have another device called orifice meter that is also used to measure the uh, rate of flow only. But what is the difference is using the venture meter, we can find out the rate of flow at uh, huge uh, aspects like in the dams and in the turbines. So we can use the venture meters. Whereas in the canals and canal regulators, we can use these orifice meters. So both are used to measure the rate of flow only. Usually, the diameter of the orifice may be kept as uh, 0.5 times the diameter of total pipe. Zero point five times the diameter of total pipe, and based on this, we can say that the coefficient of discharge for this orifice meter may be uh, ranges from zero point five five to zero point six five. Only. Why? Because usually the pipe diameter, the diameter of orifice, may be zero point five times the diameter of the pipe, so that we can take. If we draw, uh, if we connect a differential manometer at the orifice meter, so, uh, you can see this is the orifice meter. And you can see the water can flow through the orifice meter. So consider this is the pipe. And in that pipe, we are going to arrange an orifice meter like this. So simply saying, this portion is nothing but the orifice. Right? Orifice means a small hole. Orifice means a small hole. So this portion is nothing but the orifice. So three, through this portion only, the water is going to flow. Okay. So we are arranging this is uh, this one as an orifice. Okay. So the orifice will be like this. It's just like uh, it's just like a hole. So consider this is the front view and this is the side view of the orifice. So if we arrange the orifice in the pipe, then the water can flow through this portion only, through this hole only, isn't it? So this is nothing but the side view of an orifice, and here the water can be flows here. So the, if the water is flowing through the orifice meter, in that case, usually the water will flows like this, right? So the water will flows in a straight line. And suddenly, if any obstruction was there, in that case, or if the diameter of the flowing pattern is reduces, in that case, the water can flows like this, and again jumps like this, isn't it? The water can flows like this, and again jumps like this. So due to that, the water uh, pattern may be contracted at this point. So you can see this is the contracted point of the water portion. Do you understand what I am saying? So, if it is a orifice connected to the lemma, so water uh, connected portion like that, due to reducing the diameter, diameter reduce, but then when the connecting portion like that, water, then wave pattern, then flow pattern changes like this. So the water pattern was changes like this, and then suddenly increases like this. So due to this, there might be a contraction of flow pattern takes place. So this portion is contract uh, called as the contracted portion. So, you can imagine the water portion is the contract and the reduce end, right? So, if we take uh, two sections, uh, the section one is at the pipe flow and the section two at the contracted portion, then using these two sections of water flow, we can find out the equation for uh, rate of flow of uh, rate of flow through this or phase meter. So, do you understand? Due to this connection of the orifice, the diameter of the flow was reduces, uh, reduces suddenly. So due to this sudden reduction, the water flow pattern was contracted like this. Right? So 
so this is the water flow pattern due to change in the diameter of a pipe or uh, diameter of the pipe flow so here the water was contracted at this point ah oh. so here the water flow was contracted at this point and we are going to take two sections to determine the rate of flow through the orifice meter we are going to take two sections one is at the pipe flow and another one is at the contracted portion right so by taking these two sections let's consider p1 is the pressure uh, p1 is the pressure at section 1 V1 is the velocity of flow at section one. A1 is the area of the pipe at section one. And similarly, at section two also, P2 is the pressure at section two. V2 is the velocity of flow at section two at the contracted portion. And A2 is the area of the contracted portion. So here, the diameter was changes, isn't it? so here the diameter was changes from d1 to d2 at section 1 the diameter is maximum and at section 2 the diameter is minimum why because the water flow was contracted so due to that at section 2 the diameter was reduces so that from section 1 to section 2 there might be change in the diameters and there might be change in the cross sectional area also isn't it so v2 will be the contracted area and a1 will be the area of the pipe so by considering these uh, parameters let's apply the bernoulli's equation at two sections so by applying the bernoulli's equation at two sections of course here the pipe is horizontal one and this pipe is connected with the differential manometer as we know the pipe is connected with the differential manometer and here x is the difference le different levels in the two manometers not the pressure difference x is the difference of uh, heads uh, uh, difference of head levels in the manometer so by applying the bernoulli equation at section 1 and at section 2 we know that the equation will be p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2 g plus z1 is equals to p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2 g plus z2 and here if we take the pressure uh, the differential head then the equation will be p1 by rho z plus z1 minus of p2 by rho z plus z2 is equals to the pressure difference the differential head is equals to v2 square by 2z minus v1 square by 2z and we know that h is nothing but the pressure head difference which was uh, flowing between the pipes then we, this equation will become as h is equals to v2 square by 2z minus v1 square by 2z and by taking 2z as common the equation will be v2 square minus v1 square by 2z is equals to h and from there the equation will become as 2z will uh, change to left side then it will be 2z into h is equals to v2 square minus v1 square so let's take the uh, equation for v2 from this equation the equation for v2 can written as v2 is equals to root of 2z h this will uh, change to right side or left side then it will be plus v1 square right so that is nothing but the velocity which was flowing at section 2 or the velocity which was flowing at the contracted portion and that contracted portion is called as vena contracta at any point so not only during the pipe flow even during the sudden contraction also we will consider the term as the technical term as vena contracta only so this contracted portion this contracted portion can be called as vena contracta right this contracted portion can be called as the vena contracta so at the vena contracta the velocity equation will be v2 equals to square root of 2z h plus v1 square and at the vena contracta the area is nothing but a2 then by taking the area of the orifice orifice area can be calculated based on the diameter isn't it so you can see this is the diameter of orifice and this is the diameter of vena contracta both will be different isn't it you can see this is the diameter of the orifice 
and this is the diameter of vena contactor so both the diameters are different isn't it both are not equal both the diameters are not equal so based on the diameter of orifice we can calculate the area of orifice as a sub x o consider area of the orifice as a sub x o and area of the vena contractor may be considered as a2 or ac why because we are taking the second section at the vena contractor right so that the area at the vena contractor is a2 and the area of the orifice is a sub x o then using these two values we can get the coefficient of contraction equation as cc the coefficient of contraction cc is equals to area of the second section by or area of the vena contractor by area of the orifice right coefficient of contraction formula is equals to area of the vena contractor by area of the orifice then from this the formula uh, the equation for area at section 2 or area at the vena contractor will be A2 is equals to A bar into CC. Here A2 is the area at the vena contractor and A bar is the area of orifice and CC is the coefficient of contraction. And now let's take the continuity equation. What is the continuity equation? We know that continuity equation is A1 V1 is equals to A2 V2. And from this V1 can be written as A2 V2 by A1. V1 can be written as A2 V2 by A1. And we know the Value for A two. We do the equation of A two. So substituting the equation of A two in this formula, then it will be V one equals to A O C C into V two by A one. And substituting the value of uh, <coughs> substituting the value of V one in this equation. Substituting the value of V one in the V two equation, then the equation will be V two equals to root of two Z H plus A one square C C square into V two square by A one square, and by simplifying by uh, applying square on both sides, so we get V two square is equals to two Z H plus A one by A one whole square into C C square into V two square, or by taking V two square as common. From this equation, then so by uh, sending this term into left side and taking v2 square uh, as common and simplifying this equation, we can get v2 is equal to root of 2g h by root of 1 minus a o by a1 whole square into c c square. So this is nothing but our calculation, or uh, but, but uh, we can get this by our simplification of uh, velocity at the second section. So by simplifying the velocity at second section, we can get the equation as v2 equals to root 2g h by root of 1 minus a o by a1 whole square into c c square. Then let's calculate uh, the discharge equation. So the discharge we know that the discharge we need to calculate the discharge at the vena contractor. So the discharge will be a2 into v2, and we know that a2 is nothing but a o into c c. So substituting and uh, substituting the values of uh, V2, that is this one, this formula. Substituting the value of V2 in the discharge formula, then we get the equation as Q equals to A O C C root to Z H by root of one minus A O by A one whole square into C C square. Then by simplifying this equation using the formula of coefficient of discharge in terms of a coefficient of contraction that is cd is equals to cc into root of 1 minus a o by a1 whole square by root 1 minus a o by a1 whole square into cc square so guys of course already we have some derivation for these equations but you don't need this right so no need to go for the derivation just learn the formulas that is enough <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> 
sorry guys so already we have the formulas for coefficient of discharge coefficient of contraction and also the coefficient of velocity also so we have the for equation for coefficient of discharge coefficient of velocity and coefficient of contraction also but you don't need the derivation simply you just remember the formulas that is enough okay so these are the relations between coefficient of discharge and the coefficient of contraction so go through the formulas don't uh, don't go for the derivation mere formula madram gurtu pettukondi cha derivation velocity avasaram ledhi right then from this equation from the coefficient of discharge equation we can get an equation for coefficient of contraction then the equation will be like this and substituting this coefficient of contraction in this equation substituting the coefficient of contraction value in this equation then and simplifying the value we can get the coefficient uh, the uh, actual discharge q is equals to cd into a o a1 root to z h by root of a1 square minus a o square here cd is the coefficient of discharge of orifice meter a o is the area of orifice a1 is the area of uh, its section 1 then uh, h is the head of water or uh, difference of pressure h which was flowing through the pipe right so there is the derivation for or for uh, rate of flow through the orifice meter so this is the equation for actual discharge whereas for theoretical discharge the equation will be held as same the remaining a o a1 to z h by root of a1 square minus a o square so the formula will be same as the venturi meter what's the difference is in this case we will consider the area of orifice instead of area which was uh, taken at section 2 right so the formula is same as the venturi meter only so what is the theoretical discharge the formula of venturi meter the equation will be a1 a2 root to z h by root of a1 square minus a2 square right but for orifice meter we will take instead of a2 we will take area of the orifice that's it that is the formula uh, to get uh, for the derivation so meke exam la kuda meer ekkadaina ee derivation la ekkadaina oka path marchipoyina final equation rasi deenni highlight cheyandi so that is enough meer final equation rasi highlight chesina kuda you will gain the maximum marks right so what's the necessary is you should highlight the thing and suppose if you forget the total so don't worry you simply write the final one that is enough Okay, guys. So let's discuss one more time uh, this uh, orifice meter. So in this uh, this orifice meter is connected with the differential manometer, and uh, let's take two sections of orifice meter. And of course, uh, during the flow of water through the orifice meter, there might be some contraction in the flow of water, and that flow of contraction is called as vena contracta. That portion is called as the when a contractor so this is nothing but a <coughs> so this portion is nothing but the when a contractor right this portion is nothing but the when a contractor and we are going to consider two sections of the pipe one section and another section is at the contracted portion that is at the when a contractor now let consider the p1 is pressure at the section 1 and v1 is velocity of flow at section 1 a the a1 is the area of the pipe at section and similarly p2 is the pressure at section 2 v2 is the uh, velocity at the vena contractor velocity of flow at contractor and a2 is the a at the vena contractor now let's apply the bernoulli's equation the bernoulli's equation will be p1 by rho z plus v1 square by 2 z plus z1 is equals to P2 by rho z plus V2 square by 2 z plus Z2, and of course here the pipe is horizontal, so we can take. <coughs> so we can take 
so we can take z1 is equals to z2 okay or else uh, we can take the pressure head as p1 by rho z plus z1 also we can take in any manner the different we can consider the z1 and the z2 as equal and cancel it both or or we can take directly by including the z1 and z2 also <coughs> then by converting the equation uh, in terms of the differential heads and the velocity heads then equation will be p1 by rho z plus z1 minus p2 by rho z plus z2 which is equals to v2 square by 2z minus v1 square by 2z so p2 by rho z and z2 left side will in the v1 square by 2z right side will in that's it then we know that p1 by rho z plus z1 minus p2 by rho z plus z2 is nothing but the differential head h so then this equation get written as h equals to v2 square by 2z minus v1 square by 2z so by taking 2z as common and sending it to left side then equation will be 2z h is equals to v2 square minus v1 square and from there the velocity uh, which was flowing in a contractor v2 is equals to root of 2z h v1 square now consider at in a contractor the area is a2 and the at the orifice the area is nothing but a sub x square at when a contractor the area a2 at the orifice the area is a sub x square then the coefficient of contraction here <coughs> the water flow is contracted and that contraction that coefficient of contraction can be calculated by using the formula area at the vena contractor by area of orifice area at the vena contractor by area of orifice and from there area at second section a2 or area at vena contractor can be written as a2 is equals to a0 into cc a2 is equals to a0 into cc now let's take the continuity uh, let's take the continuity equation the continuity equation will be a1 v1 is equals to a2 v2 and from there v1 is equals to a2 v2 by a1 and we know the value for a2 substituting that a2 as a1 into cc then it will be v1 is equals to a1 cc into v2 by a1 and now let's substitute v1 in v2 formula in this one let's substitute the value of v1 uh, well, value of v1 in v2 formula so substituting that we get v2 is equals to root to zh plus a o c c v2 by a1 whole square and simplifying this equation we can get v2 equation v2 is equals to root 2 z h by root of 1 minus a o by a1 whole square into c c square now let's calculate the discharge we know that the equation the discharge equation at outlet will be a2 v2 and a2 is nothing but we know area at vena contractor a2 equals to a1 into cc and we know the value for v2 also this value for v2 so substituting all the values we can get this equation and for further simplification we are going to take uh, we are going to consider the coefficient of discharge in terms of coefficient of contraction and from this the contra the coefficient of contraction equation will be cc equals to cd into root 1 minus a over by a1 whole square cc square by root 1 minus a over by a1 whole square and substituting the value of cc in this equation value of cc equation so only at this only in the numerator so substituting the value in the numerator and simplifying this equation we can get the coefficient of sorry, we can get the actual discharge which was flowing through the pipe as q equals to cd into q equals to cd into ao a1 root to the h by root a1 square minus ao square where cd is the coefficient of discharge ao is the area of a1 is the area at the inlet h is the differential head which was flowing through the pipe right so using these values we can find out the discharge which was flowing through the pipe the derivation is same like the venturi meter mir venturi meter nechukunna orifice meter ki derive cheyachu orifice meter nechukunna venturi meter derive cheyachu so em chestunnam ante bernoulli's equation apply chestunnam 
హెడ్ ఈక్వేషన్ తీసుకుంటున్నాం దాని నుంచి వెలాసిటీ అండ్ ఏరియా తీసుకుని డిశ్చార్జ్ ఈక్వేషన్ లో సబ్స్ట్యూట్ చేస్తున్నాం ఏరియా ఎట్ ద అవుట్లెట్ ఏ టూ అండ్ వెలాసిటీ ఎట్ ద అవుట్లెట్ వి టూ ఈ టూ ఈక్వేషన్స్ ని డిశ్చార్జ్ ఈక్వేషన్ లో సబ్స్ట్యూట్ చేసి ఫైనల్ ఈక్వేషన్ రాస్తున్నాం దట్స్ ఇట్ వెరీ వెరీ సింపుల్ వన్ నథింగ్ ఈస్ డిఫికల్ట్ సో వెంచర్ మీటర్ కంటే ఇక్కడ ఒక ఫోర్ స్టెప్స్ ఎక్కువ ఉండొచ్చు అంతే బట్ ద డెర్వేషన్ ప్రొసీజర్ ఇస్ సేమ్ నథింగ్ ఈస్ డిఫికల్ట్ ఇన్ దిస్ రైట్ ఓన్లీ ఒక ఫోర్ స్టెప్స్ మాత్రమే చేంజ్ అవుతుంది ఫోర్ స్టెప్స్ మాత్రమే ఇంక్రీజ్ అవుతుంది వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ ద క్వశ్చన్ ఆఫ్ అండ్ ద క్వశ్చన్ ఆఫ్ డిశ్చార్జ్ ఈక్వేషన్ అండ్ సబ్స్యూటింగ్ దట్ వీ కెన్ గెట్ ద ఫైనల్ ఈక్వేషన్ ఆఫ్ డిశ్చార్జ్ విచ్ వాస్ ఫ్లోయింగ్ త్రూ ద ఆర్ఫైజ్ దట్స్ ఇట్ అదర్వైజ్ ద డెర్వేషన్ విల్ బి సేమ్ బోత్ ఫర్ వెంచర్ మీటర్ అస్ వెల్ యాజ్ ద ఆర్ఫైజ్ మీటర్ ఆల్సో right is it clear about the derivation guys is it clear about the derivation do you have any doubts meer ok sari book edi solve cheyandi meer ok sari derive cheyandi book lo so meer ok sari derive chesarandi it will be very easy just logic based step by step procedure one by one each step raavali ela raavali logical ga think chesi derive chesarante just ok sari nerchukuntene vachchu the easiest and if you know the derivation for venturi meter then our base meter derivation will be very easy or if you learn the our base meter derivation then venturi meter derivation will be very very easy right so let's solve a problem on the our base meter literally i am going to read the problem so problem is given so here the problem is given as <clears throat> an r phase meter with r phase diameter 10 cm is a pipe of 20 cm diameter <clears throat> the pressure gauge is fitted upstream and downstream of the r phase meter gives readings of 19.62 n per cm square and 9.81 n per cm square respectively coefficient of discharge for the r phase meter is given as 0.6 find the discharge of water through the pipe <coughs> simple problem so in the problem they are given the diameter of r phase so directly r phase diameter is said and they are given the diameter of the pipe so diameter of r phase is d sub x bo and the diameter of pipe is d bun you should remember that right then the pressures at the section 1 and 2 are given as 19.62 newton per centimeter square and 9.81 centi- newton per centimeter square and also they are given coefficient of discharge of r phase as 0.6 and using all the values we should calculate water through the pipe so let's write the given data they are given the diameter of r phase that is d sub x bo 10 cm then the area of r phase will be pi d pi d by square by 4 so this will be the area then diameter of pipe is d1 meku venturi meter lo aithe d1 d2 vastundi is like d1 and d1 vastundi you should remember that right so danni miss cheyagurudu meer d1 d1 ni clear ga understand cheskovali r phase diameter ante d1 area a1 pipe diameter ante a1 adhe venturi meter lo aithe pipe diameter d1 throat diameter d2 is it clear pipe diameter d1 and throat diameter d2 ikkadaithe d2 place lo manam d1 iskuntunnam that's it then a1 will be pi d1 square by 4 and the value is 314.16 cm square then they have given the pressure at section 1 as 19.62 newton per cm square then converting into meters 
so we should multiply with 10 power 4 and then converting the pressure into pressure head we are going to divide with rho into g isn't it as we know convert to convert the pressure into pressure head we have to divide the pressure value with rho g then it will be pressure head p1 by rho g is equals to p1 divided by density of water 1000 into acceleration due to gravity in terms of meter as 9.81 then we can get the pressure head at section 1 as 20 meters of water. Then the pressure head at section 2, they are given the pressure at section 2 as 9.81 Newton per centimeter square. Then converting into meters, it will be 9.81 into 10 power 4 Newton per meter. So to calculate the pressure head at section 2, it will be P2 by rho z. Then substituting the values, we can get the pressure head at section 2 as 10 meters of water. Then the differential head flowing through the pipe will be H as we know H equals to P1 by rho z minus P2 by rho z. Suppose we make a problem no z values could have stay, data values could have stay, then include the value as P1 by rho z plus z1 minus of P2 by rho z plus z2. The problem don't consider that z1 and z2. Usually for horizontal pipes, the Z1 will be equals to Z2 only. So, uh, no one will give you the values. Okay, then the head can be calculated as P1 by rho z minus P2 by rho z. Then we can get the value as 10 meters of water or 10 into 100, 1000 centimeters of water. And already they have given the value for coefficient of discharge that is 0 0.6. Now, we should calculate the discharge. So, the discharge can be calculated by using the formula Q equals to CD into AO A1 by root A1 square minus AO square into root 2 GH. Right? So we have calculated the area of orifice, we have calculated the area of pipe at section 1, and we have calculated the head of water also. Substituting all the values, the discharge flowing through the pipe will be 682 uh, 68213.28 centimeter cube per second. Right? So like that we can calculate the discharge of length of the orifice. So problem now, diameter of orifice, diameter of the pipe at section 1 which are. Then we can calculate the areas. Then sec at section 1 and 2, pressure situation. Using the pressures, we can calculate the pressure head. So if we can convert the amount of G value in terms of meters, we can convert the amount of G Convert the amount of G value in terms of meters, we can convert the amount of G value in terms of centimeters. We can convert the amount of G value in terms of centimeters. We can convert the amount of G value in terms of so after that, uh, after calculating the pressure head set section 1 and 2, now we can calculate the differential head. The differential head will be the difference of the pressure heads P1 by rho z minus P2 by rho z. And they are given CD also. Substituting all the values in the formula of discharge, that is CD into AO A1 by root A1 square minus AO square into root 2 h. Substituting all the values, we can calculate the discharge which was flowing through the pipe. Right? A very, very, very simple problem. Nothing is difficult to make the formula something. Then you calculate the conversion theory. So the conversion theory could not you can't solve any problem. You should know the conversion first thing. And then you should do the formulas. So by knowing the conversion and by knowing the formula, you can solve any problem very, very easily. Is it clear, guys, about this problem? So do you understand? Send a message. I don't have headset. Please send a text message. So do you understand how to solve the problem of R5? Here or do you have any doubts? Tell me guys, is it clear? Yes ma'am. Okay, guys. So let's discuss another problem. The problem is an orifice meter with orifice diameter 15 centimeters is inserted in a pipe of 30 centimeter diameter. <clears throat> the pressure difference measured by a mercury oil differential manometer on the two sides of the orifice meter gives a reading of 50 centimeters of mercury. 
find the rate of flow of oil of a specific gravity is 0.9 when the cd of r5 is 0.64 right so problem lo clear ga cheppadu enante the r5 diameter d boy is centimeter the pipe diameter p1 is 30 cm then em cheppadu the pressure difference measured by the mercury oil differential manometer tell manometer lo डिफरशियल मैनोमीटर मेरी अं आईल की मध्य डिफरें वालू इच्छा सो हि हाज गिवे दिश वालू इन दिफरशियल मैनोमीटर द प्रेजर डिफरें मेजर बै द मेरी आईल डिफरशियल मैनोमीटर टू सैड गिवेन एस फिफ्टी से मेरी सो हि हाज गिवे दिश वालू दालू इज एक्स बट नाट द H and the pressure difference calculated by using the specific gravity. So he has given mercury oil differential manometer. Manometer difference is that manometer difference and the H1 minus H2 is that H1 minus H2 that is X. X value is given as 50 centimeters of mercury. Then he has given the specific gravity of oil. Oil specific gravity is given as 0.9. And coefficient of discharge is given as 0.6564. Using these values, we should calculate the rate of flow through the orifice. Right? That is the given data. So now let's write the given data. Diameter of orifice. D Y is given as 15 centimeter. Then area will be pi D Y squared by 4. That is 176.7 centimeters. Then diameter of pipe is uh, given as d1 equal to 30 centimeters, and then the area will be pi d1 squared by 4. And also the specific gravity is uh, specific gravity of oil is 0.9, and he has given the differential manometer reading. Uh, the difference between the manometer readings that is h1 minus h2 x is given as 50 centimeters of mercury. So to convert this value, we are going to multiply with the specific gravities. Then the differential head based on these values, the differential head can be calculated as h equals to x into s g by s o minus one, isn't it? So the formula will be same for the venture meter and manometer. Uh, sorry, or phase meter also. The formula only venture meter, venture meter can enter over it. The differential head uh, formula will be same for all devices. The differential head manometer readings, based on the manometer readings, the differential head formula will be same for all devices: for venture meter, for orifice meter, for pipe friction, for uh, sudden contraction, for all the devices which were used by the mercury. Even Kelton will tell you that when mercury is used, it calculates them. In there also to calculate the differential head, we are going to use this formula only. That is, h equals to x. X and t. H1 minus H2, left limb value minus right limb value into S G by S O minus one. Here S G is the specific gravity of heavy liquid, and S O is the specific gravity of the flowing liquid in the pipe. So specific gravity of heavy liquid, I mean, that is pipe like heavy liquid, that is mercury, and mercury specific gravity is 13.6. And the flowing liquid. The flowing liquid is oil, and the oil uh, specific gravity is given as 0.9. So substituting these values in the formula, we can get the head of water which was flowing through the pipe as 705.5 centimeters of oil. We are not calculating in terms of water; we are calculating in terms of oil. So we should substitute the value in terms of oil only. So the value is 705.5 centimeters of oil. And then coefficient of discharge of orifice meter is given as 0.64. Now we have all the values. Then substituting the values in the formula of coefficient uh, in the formula of discharge. The formula of discharge is equal to C D into A O A one by root of A one square minus A O square into root of G H. 
you know the area of orifice we know the area of uh, pipe at the section 1 and we know the head of water which was flowing through the pipe also right substituting all the values so we can calculate the discharge uh, as 137 second is it clear guys so problem la ichindi the diameter of orifice diameter of the pipe and then specific gravity of oil and differential manometer reading and the h1 minus h2 that is x value ichadu based on this we should calculate the head head will be the formula <coughs> the formula x into sd by so minus when the formula is sd by so minus 1 so substituting all the values in this formula we can get the head and now we have all the values now let's write the formula for discharge the discharge will be q equals to cd into a o a1 by root a1 square minus a o square into root 2 zh right so substituting all the values we can calculate the discharge uh, which was flowing discharge of oil which was flowing through the orifice meter right so is it clear about this so do you have any doubts regarding this orifice meter is it clear about the orifice meter or the derivation and the problems related to orifice any doubts is it do you have doubts or do you understand regarding the derivation and problem there is a lab anyone any doubts regarding this can i go to the next topic or can i discuss again about the orifice meter send a message send a text message can i go to the next topic or can i discuss again can i discuss again the orifice meter give me a reply okay let's go to another topic <clears throat> another topic is pitta tube so usually <coughs> the venturi meter or phase meter and the pitta tube all are the devices but the venturi meter and or phase meter is a device used to measure the rate of flow whereas pitta tube is used to measure the velocity of the flow right so venturi meter and or phase meter ni discharge calculate chesaki use chestaru pitta tube ni matram velocity velocity ni calculate cheyadaniki use chestaru so ikkada chaala saarlu discuss chesam so speed by second uh, is nothing but velocity speed by second is nothing but velocity right so in the speed the water flow out and the time the flow out and even calculate cheyadanikante the simplest form by using the <coughs> device called pitta tube simply by inserting this pitta tube itself we can find out the, the velocity of flow which was flowing through the pipe so to uh, in this case we are going to use a pitta tube and this pitta tube is uh, contains a glass tube and this glass tube is bent at a right angle you can see this is the uh, glass tube and this glass tube is bent at right angle like this right so this is nothing but the pitta tube so this pitta tube is uh, bent at the right angle so at the lower end the bent is uh, having an angle of 90 degrees right so at the lower end the bent is having uh, an angle of 90 degrees and in this case the kinetic energy which was flowing through the pipe will suddenly converts into pressure energy so through that pressure energy the water can rises into this piezometer so here the water can flows using the kinetic energy isn't it the water can flow using the kinetic energy and by inserting this pitta tube 
the water can enters into the kind uh, enters using the kinetic energy and suddenly at the end of the pipe the kinetic energy suddenly converts into pressure energy so due to that pressure energy only due to the using that pressure the water can rises into this pitta tube or into this piezometer so based on this principle only we can find out the velocity of flow which was flowing through the pipe do you understand so ikkada em ayyante water certain kinetic energy tho flow avutu untundi so water certain kinetic energy tho flow avutunappudu pitta tube insert chesthe ee pitta tube lo water kinetic energy tho flow avutu certain bent valla water suddenly ee kinetic energy certain force or certain pressure tho pai ki move avutundi or pai ki rise avutundi isn't it so ikkada em ayyante this kinetic energy will suddenly turns into the the kinetic energy will suddenly turns into the pressure energy ante ikkada water pressure tho rise ayindi kinetic energy ante normal flow tho untundi certain velocity tho pressure energy ante ikkada certain pressure valla water pai ki rise ayindi right so that is the principle behind here and so the principle is nothing but while inserting the pitta tube the water can flows into kinetic energy and at the right angle the velocity of the flow will be suddenly becomes as zero at this point at certain point the velocity will be suddenly becomes zero and then at this point the kinetic energy will becomes into pressure energy so this point is called as the stagnation point this point is called as the stagnation point why because the water is going to stagnate at the bending isn't it the water is going to stagnate at the bending so that is called as the stagnation point <clears throat> and then the water can rises into the piezometer and here we can take h is the rise of water above the water surface and capital h is the head of water which was inserted or a head of the water which was inserted in the pipe so using these values calculate the we can calculate this uh, uh, velocity which was flowing through the pipe so to calculate the velocity which was flowing through the pipe let's take two sections so this is section 1 and this is section 2 so at the two section consider p1 as the intense pressure at section 1 v1 is the velocity at section 1 and similarly p2 is uh, pressure at section 2 and v2 is uh, head velocity at section 2 and here h capital h is the depth of the tube in the liquid <coughs> capital h is depth of the tube in the liquid and the small h is rise of water or rise of liquid in the tube above the water surface capital h is depth of the tube Lies rise of the water or rise of the liquid above the free surface, and applying the Bernoulli's equation on two sections, we get the equation as p1 by rho z plus v1 square by 2z plus z1 is equal to p2 by rho z plus v2 square by 2z plus z2. And here the pipe is horizontal, so z1 is equal to z2. And here we are taking the sections. The section e1 is at the inlet, and the section 2 is at the stagnation point and at this stagnation point no velocity stagnation ante ne enti water akkada constant ga nilchi poyindi adi water ekkada idi nilchi poyindo akkada velocity ela untundi water move aitene kada velocity if there is no movement then there is no velocity then at this stagnation point or at this section to the velocity will be zero isn't it considering this section 2 at this stagnation point and at this stagnation point there is no movement of water hence the velocity there is no velocity hence the velocity at section 1 will be zero and also the pressure head at section 1 will be h only the pressure head at this section 1 will be h the depth of the uh, tube right and then the pressure head at this section 2 at this stagnation point the pressure head at this section 2 will be 
H capital H plus small h also. So the pressure head P1 by rho z is equal to H and pressure head at section 2 P2 by rho z will be small h plus capital H also. Now substituting all the values in the Bernoulli's equation we get H H plus V1 square by 2z is equal to H plus H. V2 square by 2z will be 0. Why? Because V2 is 0. And Z1 is equal to Z2. So these two will get cancelled. So the term will be capital H plus V1 square by 2z is equal to H plus H. Then from this equation we can cancel H on uh, both sides. Then the equation will be H. The remaining thing H equals to V1 square by 2z and from there is equal to square root of 2z h. So this is the equation to calculate the velocity of flow using pitot tube and this velocity is nothing but actual velocity and from this actual velocity we can write the, the equation. Sorry. This equation is nothing but the theoretical velocity not the actual. This is the theoretical velocity and from this the actual velocity will be coefficient of velocity into the theoretical velocity, the coefficient of velocity into root 2 z h. So the velocity at any point can be calculated by using the formula B equals to C V into square root 2 z h. This is very, very, very important formula to calculate the velocity. And of course, using this equation only, we can design the uh, machines like uh, turbines and pumps. So this formula is very, very important. That is B equals to C V into square root 2 z h. This formula is very, very important to, to design the machines like turbines and pumps. So, Miru, next to chapter, so turbines and pumps, Charvay Pudu, Dini Guda Zaruta. E equation based is going to turbines and pumps will design this now. Right? So, do you understand the concept? Me concept at the mind. One second, guys. So, pitot tube. Pitot tube is a device which is mainly used to find out the velocity at any point. So, to measure the velocity at any point, we are going to use the pitot tube. So, it is a tube. It is a glass tube which is having right angle at the lower end. The glass tube is having right angle at the lower end. So the lower end is bending with 90 degrees. <coughs> and at the bending, the water is going to stagnate. So that secret pita tube we insert chayangani, water uh, pita tube like at the out to e bending the gris stagnate type of So this point is called as the stagnation point. Stagnation and there is no movement. Stagnate and the water we could flow to the kinetic energy suddenly the pressure energy can convert the heat. due to this pressure energy the water will rise through the pressure right so the main principle behind this pita tube is nothing but the kinetic, kinetic energy will convert into pressure energy uh, during the flow of uh, during the flow of liquid in a pita tube and this energy will convert at this stagnation point. So let's take two sections. One section, this the section one is at the inlet of the pipe, and another section is at the stagnation point. Section one is at the inlet of the pipe, and section two is at the stagnation point. So this is the flow of velocity, and this velocity will stagnate at the bending. So consider this is the section, and capital H is the depth of the tube below the water and the H is the rise of water above the free surface. So this is the free surface of water and the small h is the rise of water in glass tube above the free surface. Then the pressure head at section 1 will be H only. The pressure is flowing with a head that is H and at the section 2 the pressure will be capital H plus small h both. And the velocity at section 1 will be V1 and velocity at section 1 will be V2 and at V2, sorry, at section 2, 
there is no movement of water due to stagnation so that the velocity at section 2 will be zero and here the pipe is uh, horizontal that means z1 is equal to z2 then applying the bernoulli's equation at section 1 and 2 the equation will be like this and we know that the pipe is horizontal so that z1 is equal to z2 and the at section 2 the water is uh, or the liquid is stagnated so there is no velocity then velocity at section 2 will be zero and pressure head at section 1 is uh, capital h and pressure head at section 2 will be the total rise in the liquid that is capital h plus small h substituting all the values in the bernoulli's equation p1 by rho z as h and v1 square by 2z is equals to p2 by rho z as h plus h v2 is 0 so that v2 square by rho 2z is 0 and z1 and z2 will get cancelled then the remaining will be h plus v1 square by 2z equals to h plus capital h cancelling h on both sides <coughs> we get h is equals to v1 square by 2z and from there v1 is equals to square root of 2g h this is the equation for velocity or this is the equation for theoretical velocity the equation so using this equation we can calculate the velocity by inserting fit out cube that is v1 equals to root 2 g h and from there the actual velocity can be actual velocity is equals to coefficient of velocity into root 2 g h usually the coefficient of velocity is also ranges between 0 0.95 to 0 0.99 so this is the important formula which is used to calculate the velocity at any point by inserting fit or tube. Okay, this is the formula to calculate the velocity at any point by inserting fit or tube. Okay, so this is about the fit or tube. Okay, in the next class we will discuss the problems on the fit or tube. Okay guys, in the next class we will discuss some problems on the Peter tube. So is it clear about the derivation of Peter tube? Very very simple one. Nothing is difficult here, isn't it? Very simple one. These are the three devices which are work by using the Bernoulli's equation. In the next class we will discuss the problem. You can leave now.